The next thing we're going to have a look at is report status and this is kind of the last uh, bit of theory we're going to learn and then we're going to dive into building. So report status, what's that all about? What's the difference between draft and active content? So when you're building content or accessing content in Yellowfin, you're going to come across a few different statuses. Uh, the first is what we call draft. This is what occurs when you initially build a piece of content. So when you start creating a report, for example, um, when you start creating that report, it's draft. It hasn't been saved yet. Once you decide, okay, that's ready to go, you activate it. So you save it and activate it. And once it's active, that means that other users are ready to consume it so they can see the report or whatever piece of content we're talking about and they can interact with it. From there, if you then choose to edit the item, it will go back into draft mode. Okay, so there's that active draft comparison. And finally, there's deleted. And that just means that you've completely removed the item from the system and no one can access it anymore. Okay, so there's those three levels of content. Now, when you are building content and, and making changes, it's important to understand what happens when you do put it back into draft mode. When we're talking about reports in particular, now I'm not talking about dashboard tabs or storyboard, they don't behave this way, just reports. If you take an active report and you place that back into draft mode by editing it, what will happen is Yellowfin will keep an active version of the report and that will mean that users that normally access the report via the dashboard or storyboard will still see the old version of the report so they won't sort of see a, a hole in their dashboard or a hole in their storyboard slide uh, they'll still see the report and then while you make changes they'll use that old version then when you're ready to complete the process you have a few different options so the first is undo changes and basically what that does is says oh look I've made a mistake when I edit when I made my changes and edited the formula that I had in this report, I broke it and I can't remember what it was anymore. So I'm going to undo changes. And what that effectively does is roll it back to the version that's currently active. And so the consumers won't know that there's been any change and you'll be able to edit the report again if you need to. Delete is very similar, so if you're on the draft version and click delete, it will just remove it and it will only leave the active version behind. So it's in effect a very similar thing. And finally we have activate and what happens here is you save the new version that you've made changes to and it actively replaces the old version that users were making use of through other means so dashboard storyboard and so on now once you activate a report there's no way to roll it back so your only opportunity to do that is while it's still in draft mode okay now we've learned about major components in yellowfin uh, the basic security levels and the different statuses your report can be in, we're going to dive into creating reports. And this is where uh, this, les this lesson actually gets going. So what do you really need to know in order to start creating your first reports? So when you start building your reports, you need to understand what a field is, what aggregations are and how to apply them. Uh, what advanced functions are, sections, filters, calculated fields, drilling, and charts. Okay, so all of the items we've got listed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk us through uh, those ideas and, and sort of explore those. And then we're going to go straight into the report builder and create some reports using the items we've learned about. So to start out with, we have fields. And basically speaking, these are the columns, rows, or the cross-tab components of your report. 
Now, if you don't know what a crosstab is, um, you may be familiar with the same functionality uh, called a pivot or a pivot table. Uh, other tools uh, traditionally may call it pivot. Uh, but if you're not familiar with that either, we'll have a look at it when we create a report. So basically just think of a field as the component you drag in to be a column or a row. So whatever the heading is, that's your field. So in this example, we've got two columns. We've got year and invoice amount. From there, we have aggregations and it's a little bit of a mouthful, but basically what it means is a way to summarize your field. Now, depending on the type of field you have, you'll have different options, but aggregations can include sum. So that's just basically adding all the values up. Average. So that's calculating the mean. Uh, min, which is finding the smallest value. Max, which is finding the largest value. Uh, count, which is counting all of the individual values up and working out how many of them there are. And count distinct only counts the unique values. So if you're not sure what the difference between count and count distinct is, a count will go, okay, I have, say we're looking at sales of a store. And our sales are measured by product code. And maybe we sell sort of we sell three computers that day with the same code. Count will count all three of those computers, whereas count distinct will see, well, these have the same code, so I'm only going to count that once. So I just want to know how many unique types of item we sold today, whereas the count works out the actual units. Then we have sections. So from here, we've created some really basic tables. We've looked at summing our data up. The next thing we want to explore is how to split up really big tables and make them a little bit easier to consume. Sections are a really good way of doing that. Basically, what a section does is it takes the main table and splits it based on a value. So in the example here, we've actually split it by gender. And we've got a subtable. Uh, so we took the original and broke it into pieces and we have a, a little table for each gender val value. So one for female, one for male. Uh, and then from there we move on to filters. So when you're talking about filters, basically if you're not familiar with what they are, they're a way of restricting the data that you see. So you're actually probably already familiar with filters, even if you don't realize it. Anytime you search online or you do online shopping and things like that, and you change the results uh, to only see products of a particular size or a particular color, those are filters. So uh, at their base level, that's what we're doing in Yellowfin. So we're creating basic filters. And there will be more advanced filters to come. So from there, we look at calculated fields. And calculated fields are basically just a way of providing a formula and entering that into our report. So there are three different types of formula that you can enter through the report builder. The first is a simple formula, and we'll explore how that works, but basically uh, they're just basic arithmetic formulas and things like that, so this A plus B and, and so on. Uh, the next type of formula you can have is what we call a pre-built formula, and it's sometimes known as a custom function. Uh, don't worry about that too much, it's mainly administrators that call them custom functions. Uh, basically, what a pre-built formula is, is a formula that your administrator builds. And all you have to do is enter the components. So they write all of the complex math or uh, formula components. And all you have to do is say, use this field for that or use this field. So it's like a little template. 
Finally, we have freehand SQL formulas, and we won't actually be looking at these in this session. Um, they're really more for advanced users, but basically it lets you enter a segment of SQL uh, rather than using the standard formula builder. Now, if that last bit didn't make any sense to you, don't worry, because we're not covering those today. Okay. So once you've entered your own calculations, you have the opportunity to make use of advanced functions. Now these are kind of another way of using formulas and, and sort of manipulating the results in your report, but they're different because they're things that we do to the report once it comes back from the database. Now this doesn't matter so much to um, basic report writers, but if you are looking at completing the more advanced training as well, just understand that advanced functions take place after the SQL has returned the results from the database and they're performed as a, a Java function. So they're actually separate uh, to the SQL query. Now again, if that last little bit that I said doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. You don't need to know that in order to make use of these. It's just beneficial for more advanced users 